today I'm extra excited for today's guest because this is a guest we have talked about in many many videos but this is the first time we get her here into our studio. Emma, who are you and what are you doing in Taiwan? I am Emma. I'm not the Emma, meaning I don't actually own the company, but I am a employee at Emma and namely I'm a sleep researcher. But Emma is your real name. Emma is my real okay, name, yeah. yeah it's not a stage name or anything. There's no other place for you to work then. <laughs> exactly. Than <Emma>. Everything <laughs> I own is already personalized from Emma. It's really great. I'm American originally, but I spent a long time in my childhood in Shanghai, China. So I was already very used to the international lifestyle and like living abroad, that whole that whole cup of tea. I went back to the US to do my bachelor's degree and there was when I got really into research and psychology and after that I ended up in Germany doing research at a university for a couple of years before I shifted over to the non-academic research sector and that was how I kind of fell into the sleep scientist role at Emma. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I studied uh, back in the day as well, the only thing I wanted to do is sleep. So I kind of understand your, your journey from uh, <laughs> academics and school to like, I just want to sleep. So now we're in, in Germany then, but how do you end up here in Taiwan? So we have a pop-up store happening right now in Taiwan for Emma until the 10th of November. And then in the meantime, I've also been doing like different influencer interviews and meeting different consumers. Is this your first time in Taiwan? It's my second time. I came second once as a kid with my mom. Oh. Um, um, just for two or three days because we came from Shanghai and she was on a business trip and she brought me along So this is my first real, real time, time. Okay, yeah. I see. Wandered around a little bit. I didn't leave the city per se, but I went to like the big touristy spots So I did like the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial. I went to uh, the Tianmu like hiking trail and I saw some oh, monkeys so, Oh, That nice. was very cool. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> not everyone sees the monkeys up there So it's I was very lucky. nervous that I would hike all that way get exhausted get sweaty and dirty and then not see a monkey But I saw at least four Mm. So. Did you see the, the waterfall too? I did see the waterfall, yeah. yeah, it was really beautiful. Nice. That, well, that's, that's very like advanced touristy <laughs> stuff already. Is it? Yeah. Okay, good. Besides that, I've been eating a lot, I would say. What's, yeah. your, what's your favorite Taiwanese food? I love Tong Yu Bing. Oh, okay. It's like one of my favorite things to eat. I always miss it in Germany because you can't really find them like out in the streets there. Yeah. But you, I ate that for breakfast almost every day. You guys have a doner kebab though. That's a really, yes, that's a really good second. Kebab. Yep, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Living in, in China, was it as you imagined it to be? Or what was your like impression of Taiwan before coming here? And, and how mm. is it now after, after eight days? Before coming here, I think I had a relatively decent understanding that like there were some surface cultural similarities between mainland China and Taiwan, but that I would be surprised by something, but I just wasn't really sure what I what would be different. I mean, besides obviously traditional characters, which is still really hard for me because I learned to simplify it. One thing that really surprised me was um, the metro system here. Getting on and off the metro is so easy. In China, I had to fight to get on and off. Like there, it was every man for himself, elbows flying left and right, always every single time, no matter what time of day it is, it felt like getting on and off the metro was like you have to gear up for war. But here, everybody just waits so li nicely. They wait in line. People get off, then you take a deep breath, and then you get on. It's very peaceful, very serene. <laughs> I really like that. Halloween decor. Halloween decor? Halloween decor. It's almost everywhere. In Germany, save for maybe like a couple places really close to where all the Americans live, you don't really see any Halloween. <laughs> where all the Americans anything. live? Anything, like yeah. Specific villages oh, for yes. the Americans. Oh yeah, <laughs> of course there is. We like to stick together. But here, I almost everywhere I go, there's at least a little like token pumpkin or, you know, a Halloween special treat that you can get at the store or something. And it's really cute. As an American, I really love it. Um, Sleep research and like ghosts and <laughs> goblins and scary yes. stuff. Yeah. Yes. Perfect for your sleep. Speaking about uh, having to fight for yourself on the on the metro, mm. has there been any other like uh, challenges or difficulties here in Taiwan as mm. an, an American or after living in, like in, in Germany for some time? After coming from Germany, the most jarring thing is people taking photos of you in the street or like taking ask random strangers asking to take a selfie. Happened to me almost every day since I've gotten here. Okay, would never happen in Germany ever. <laughs> They're True. very, they're way too privacy oriented. But yeah. It's okay that we record this, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. of course. Yeah. yeah. We're not in Germany anymore. <laughs> this nope. is Taiwan. <laughs> this is Taiwan. We can do whatever we want on social media. Speaking about living your life, I think that you must have the best life in the world because as an Emma sleep expert, mm -hmm. you just get paid to sleep. 
Is that how it works? I wish. I wish. <laughs> that would be nice. But actually, no, I do a lot of things that require me to be awake, unfortunately. What, what is your actual title? And what do you actually do? Sleep science manager. Doesn't Sleep really make sense. How do you manager. like how do you manage? science what we call each other like in the team and in r d and stuff is just sleep researchers my girlfriend is doing some sleep research right now she's actually still sleeping in an uh, emma bed i we're, can't wait to read her findings we're recording this at 3 p.m on, on a tuesday <laughs> oh no my team has three distinct like main jobs let's say at emma the first one is to help with the design of the mattresses our second role is to do a lot of sleep education things where we help consumers better understand how to choose the right mattress how to choose the right pillow and not not only that, but that the mattress and the pillow are only one part of the equation. So if you have the perfect product selection, but you still have terrible sleep hygiene, you probably still aren't going to sleep the best that you can. So we provide, for example, like curriculum for our Emma Up app, which is a like sleep tracking app that people can download for their phone. And then the third thing we do is what we call sleep consultancy. We partner with different professional sports leagues, work with the athletes to help them improve their sleep and uh, in doing so improve their performance. So we're right now working with, for example, uh, FC Burnley and next week I'll fly to Spain and start our uh, sleep consultancy with the Atletico Madrid women's team which oh, I'm really excited wow. about <laughs> yeah that's super cool if you now have like a lot of science in the mattresses why can't you just make like one mattress that is like this is the best mattress for anyone mm, good question one reason <laughs> very very simply put is that sleep is still a very individual and personalized process for example in Taiwan we know that people tend to prefer for more firm mattresses versus Europe. But other things like your body weight, your body shape even, your height, your age, your sex, all of these things can also influence the very specific parameters of a mattress that is perfect for your body, which is why it's you can't just design one simple uh, mattress that suits everybody's needs. Good answer to my good question. <laughs> for you then, you personally, what are you sleeping in? Well, I'm waiting, waiting, waiting for us to launch one of our new product, which is the Black Diamond mattress. I think Ooh. that's what it's called in the Taiwan market. The Black Diamond mattress. I'm waiting for us to launch that because then I want to order that and upgrade my lifestyle a little bit. I have the hybrid version here. Okay. And I have to say, recently I added the, the topper okay. uh, on yeah. top of the hybrid one. Best combination. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not a certified Emma sleep expert research manager but the best combination. Nice. Which me. topper? Which topper? I, I don't know. There's only uh, one topper, I think. Okay, maybe in You Taiwan. got more toppers in Germany? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I think we have two in Germany. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I feel like we're going to have a chat after this interview it's... and see if we can get some uh, diamond fair. toppers here in Taiwan too. Very fair, very fair. <laughs> Based on, on your research, what do you think is like the main thing that the average Taiwanese person could do to like increase the overall sleep quality. The first one that comes to mind is temperature because as I've noticed in the last couple of days, it is much hotter here and more humid than Germany. 18 mm. degrees is about the optimal temperature for sleep. Like like your, your AC mm -hmm. for 18 degrees. Yeah. That's it's, cold even for me. It's quite cold, yeah. That, so what? So test it out, see how you feel. If you wake up shivering in the night, it's obviously too cold. Turn it up a degree or two degrees. I like 20 degrees personally. Oh, wow. But... Yeah, I mean, I, I have a fight with my girlfriend every night. Yeah? I, I want to have like 22. Really? And my girlfriend has like 25. <gasps> 25? <Yeah>. That's... <laughs> Okay, now we have scientific <laughs> proof that I'm, I'm right on this one. Cold yeah. AC. My other thing is about like Taiwan specifically. I have never taken a nap really? in my life. Then I come to Taiwan and then everyone is like, let's take a nap. And I'm like, are you like three, you know? Like, what are you talking about? Is there any scientific research there? Like, am I right again? Or is the Taiwanese like okay with taking their naps? You might both be right. Most people have a natural dip in their energy levels around lunchtime or right after lunchtime. People used to say that it was because you're using energy digesting food, but it seems that even if you don't eat lunch, you still have that dip. So to not work against that system, but to try and schedule very low effort tasks for the time right after lunch or the time when they feel like that dip in energy hits them the hardest. The other thing is the duration of the nap. That's a big component of whether or not I can give the sign off on it <laughs> as a sleep scientist. When you sleep, you're not it's not just one like static state that you're in for eight hours or for however long your eyes are closed. Actually, we're going through different uh, phases, which we divide into three distinct phases. So the first is light sleep, then deep sleep, and then REM sleep, which is rapid eye movement. And if you someone, rapid eye movement. Yeah. When you're sleeping. Yeah. 
And so if you look at someone who's sleeping and they're in this phase called rapid eye movement, you can actually see underneath their eyelids, their eyes darting back and forth. Do we all do that? We all do that. It's perfectly natural. In fact, it's very healthy for us to do that. We shouldn't try to avoid it. Yeah, it looks really, truly exactly like you're doing. Wow. have to zoom in on it when okay. you edit the, the footage. So let's say that you're going to have like an eight hour long night's sleep. Mm -hmm. You will still go through like these cycles. Yeah. So typically like a good night of full sleep is between four to six sleep cycles. And each sleep cycle, you go through each of the phases. Light sleep typically is about the first 15 to 20 minutes after you fall asleep. Then you cool. enter into deep sleep. As the name might imply from deep sleep, you're sleeping more deeply. That is, it's harder to wake up from. And if you wake someone up during deep sleep because they're not like, let's say naturally programmed to wake up from that state, then they'll experience something that we call sleep inertia. People who take a nap and then you wake up and you're like, where am I? What year is it? What's my name? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's because they're experiencing sleep inertia because they've been woken up during deep sleep. So when you take a nap, ideally you should be concentrating it into this light sleep phase, which is about the first 20 minutes of sleep. After that, you enter into deep sleep and you'll have a harder time waking up and you'll actually feel, you'll perform worse for about 30 minutes to an hour after waking up. There's been studies that have shown even 10 minutes is uh, enough to gain some performance boost right after you wake up. Sound as well, because typically we should be sleeping in a quiet environment. Um, so I have also had trouble the last couple of days with uh, the Taipei traffic outside my hotel. Some people don't have a problem, I feel. Yeah, like, some people just get used to it. I mean, that's the very basic, not, yeah, <laughs> not like, very scientific answer. Like my, my previous roommate and, and my girlfriend now, mm. they get both like, you know, it's, it's 2 p.m. It's super bright lit living room. I think I'm just going to take a nap. And they just like fall asleep like that. Wow. Or, or my girlfriend in in cars, in trains, in planes. I cannot mm. fall asleep if I move, like in a car, in mm. a train. Maybe you can do some research on me, finding out like what the problem is here. I mean, I know that I'm really freaky and that actually when there's turbulence on a plane, I instantly fall asleep. I feel so relaxed. I instantly pass out. If otherwise, I can't really sleep on a plane, but if there's turbulence, then I'm done. I'm not crazy, okay. even though so, everybody I know crazy. tells me I'm crazy. I'm just expecting like the next Emma slogan be like, as comfortable as turbulence on airplane. Uh -huh. <laughs> I really don't understand why people hate it so much. It's so lovely to me. Yeah, it's, it's not for, oh wow, yeah, that sounds like a great sleeping experience right there. That's <laughs> it's, what I want. It's great. I'm hoping on my flight back that I can ride the turbulence wave. I mean, one way that you could try to kind of force yourself to get used to it is to only try to sleep in those like, let's say non-ideal contexts when you're really tired. Could try that. Okay, I will. I okay. Will. Speaking about uh, trying things, you said that now we do have a Emma pop-up store yes, here, yes. In, here in Taiwan. Yes. It's at a, a venue called Submarine. That's where it's. So we have, for example, the three different mattresses. We have the Emma Original, the Emma Black Diamond, and the Emma Hybrid. Taiwan. The Black Diamond is already here. Is or that the pop-up store? And it will be that... coming out soon. Yeah. Ooh. So check the Ooh, okay. website. And if you do check the Emma website, not only will you see the brand new Black Diamond mattress, you will also see their double 11 promotion where you can get up to 50% off their mattresses. And if you do use my coupon code Lucas in Taiwan, you will get an additional 10% off your purchase as well. We have our duvets, we have our pillows as well. We have duvets? The top of. Yeah, we have duvets. You have duvets? Yeah. I have been gone in Europe for like six weeks and I'm missing so much here. Things are uh, happening. And we move fast at Emma. And if you also have the opportunity to try the, the black diamond mattress, please do so and let me know what mm. the difference is because I've actually never tried it. I never seen, I never heard about this until now. How much science does it actually go into like designing the beds? Emma original mattress is 100% mm -hmm. memory foam. Yep. Doesn't really sound like it takes a scientist to design that. It's like, I have an idea. 100% memory foam. Done. Done. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mattress designer right now. Fair enough. Fair enough. Great. A good question. So the first thing is that it's a little bit more nuanced than just like saying, oh, any foam will do. Because actually the type of foam that you pick, there's different densities, there's different thicknesses, there's different like ways that you can formulate them to make them better or less at retaining heat. I mean, this is the hybrid, but I'll show you anyway. Mm. So just imagine that this was actually, I'll put it here. So just imagine that like this part was actually all foam for right. so, our purposes. But, so, so this is the, the this hybrid This is the version. hybrid one, So this yeah. is the actual hybrid version. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the bed that I have myself. Yeah, right there you there. go. You can see inside, like Ooh. seeing its yeah, guts. Yeah, just the same. <laughs> 
So see, like these different layers here, the different colors represent different types of foam. Top layer should typically be something that's more breathable and feels a little bit softer to lay on. Whereas the inner layers, so in the memory foam mattress, like replacing where the, um, the springs are, that layer should typically be much thicker foam that's a little, that's more supportive of your body when you're laying on it. And it's a little bit harder to like, if you press down to fully compress. Whereas if you see, like when I press here, the top two layers of foam, they condense right easily, like quite easily down into just a tiny little sliver. But then the bottom two layers, they're staying relatively level because they have different densities, different thicknesses, and they respond differently to pressure. Okay, so if you ever wondered how exactly my own bed looks like, uh, yes. it looks like this. I think that the Emma original one mm -hmm. is the most comfortable, but I sleep better in the Emma hybrid. Does okay. that make sense? Or is that just like something I'm imagining? When I lay on the original, I feel more like I'm sinking into it. I feel more yeah. like cuddled by the mattress. Yes. Whereas the hybrid, you feel there's less, less of your skin, less of your body is in contact with the actual mattress surface. And that's primarily because of the springs. They're doing this extra work to support your body. And as to why you sleep better on the hybrid, mm, could be because you're getting old and you need a little bit more support. Excuse me? It's simply a fact of life. We're older now than we were when we started this interview. That's, no, that's true. That's true. Yes. Air can pass much more easily through springs and therefore hot air from your body can dissipate into the room more quickly than with memory foam where the air kind of like goes into the mattress and can come in and out a little bit depending on the porosity of the foams but it doesn't have nearly as much ability to escape um, so it could be the temperature regulation as well that contributes. You should also mention if you also want to try out the different mattresses you of course have 100 nights sleep ah, guarantee yes. from Emma so you can return the mattress if you if you for some reason want to return it but now with this pop-up store mm. who is available until when? I believe the 10th of November. 10th of November uh, you can just go there and try it out yourself. Yes. Please go check it out you of course have all the links and everything you can possibly need down in the description and uh, now you have two days left here in Taiwan. <laughs> no, I leave tonight. You leave tonight? And leave tonight, you yeah. You leave tonight? At 10.30 p.m. Oh, wow. I know. And then it's straight back to Germany? Yes, yeah. To, and uh, I have a direct flight, which is kind of nice, kind of to long. to Germany. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. I just transferred like six hours in Dubai. The amount of traveling yeah. is, uh, is as, you, as you said, I'm getting old apparently. So uh, <laughs> sorry, too, <laughs> too old for to travel. Never too old to travel. Never too old to travel. But I hope that you also don't get too old to travel back here to Taiwan. So we get I to have uh, another sit down here with you. Yes. And I hopefully that will also mean that there will be even more of these uh, secret Emma mattresses and toppers that they have back home in Germany in their, <laughs> in their sleep factories. Yes. Uh, so we hope that you will come back here with Thank some you. hopefully new black diamond mattresses and toppers yes. and everything. And these duvets, I'm very curious about the, the Emma Go duvets. to the pop-up store, you can test them out. There, there we go. go. There we go to the pop-up stores. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank My you. name is Lucas. It starts with L as in like. Ends with S, ends with subscribe. Please to both, and see you all in the next one.